Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my sewing room. And today I'm happy because it is my turn in the Riley Blake Designs Block Challenge um, year 2023. So the hashtag is RBD Block Challenge 2023. And what I'm gonna be showing you how to make is my honey blossom flock. Okay, so here is my 10 inch honey blossom block. All of the blocks are 10 inches. Let me give you a little info on this. So this started in January and um, we did the first one last year, I believe, for the 2022 one. And we go till, I don't know, I didn't look at the calendar, but it's like May or something like that. But what happens is each block is a surprise. Starting in January, they released four blocks every Tuesday, one each Tuesday on their website and you don't know what the block looks like until that Tuesday. And Cindy, who is the owner of Riley Blake Designs, does a tutorial on that block, and it's a free PDF block, and she shows you how, you know, to sew it together um, with her method, and then the next week there's another one, and except for the last Tuesday of every month. I'm trying to remember everything. Okay, except for the last Tuesday of every month, there's a break there, and then you're able to catch up, which is nice. And so in February, mine is the last one in February, the third block. So this makes seven blocks that we have so far. And there's going to be, I believe there's 16. And I'll correct that in the notes if I'm wrong, but I believe there's 16 blocks. Now each block is designed by a different Rite of Lake designer. And they're so fun. They're all so cute. And let me show you the blocks up to this point. Let me grab a design board and my notes because I don't want to get the names of these blocks wrong. And I want to make sure that I let you know who designed each block. They're all so fun. Okay, so this is block number one. This is called Cottage Garden. And it was designed by Beverly McCullough. Oh, and before I continue on, I should let you know that I'm sewing all of my blocks in calico and then I'm going to make mine into a bed runner. Now Riley Blake Designs of course always designs a setting and that will come at the end of you know the the challenge so that you can see the setting you can choose to do that or if you'd like you can do my bed runner and so we're going to put the setting for the bed runner on the website under the free patterns and I will put a link to that bed runner and also I think I'll have Cassidy insert a picture here of the bed runner and how it looks so far. Um, what I'm doing is using this print from Calico for the background of the of the bed runner when I set them together and then this print right here for the binding and what I did with the photo of the bed runner is I kind of blurred out the blocks that we haven't done yet. So it looks kind of funny in the photo, but I just kind of want to give you the idea of what the bed runner is going to look like. And I'm just um, posting each of my blocks on Instagram. So if you want to do your blocks out of calico, you can, and so that you can replicate these blocks if you'd like. Um, Kimberly is joining in with me and she is doing the same exact blocks that I colored in my calico fabric and so her and I are going to have twin bed runners. And so, okay, back to the blocks. So this is number one and this is number two. This is called Fanfare and this is by Jill Finley. Okay, I love that block. I'm, I'm loving each and every one of these blocks. Now, when I'm sewing my blocks like this, especially ones like this that have all these pieces, I'm pressing my seams open. And then this one is called Threaded, and it's by Christopher Thompson. Love that block. Okay. Hi, Christopher. And this one right here is Tiptoe Through the Tulips, and I love this block, too. This is a really fun one. I love them all. I keep saying that about all of them, but they're all so fun. And this is by Jennifer Long. And, you know, I always love flower blocks, so... That is so darling. And then this one is block five. And this is called the Cheerful Churn Dash. And it's by Amanda Niederhauser. 
And that's so fun. So fun to use in all these different prints from Calico. And then this is six. And this is designed by Sandy Gervais. And it is Jack in the Box. Okay. Now, what I'm going to talk about today, and of course, this is seven, Honey Blossom. What I'm going to talk about today is... Um, fabric placement and color placement and how you can change the look of a block by just changing fabric and color placement. So, you know, this could have been a background and this, you know, to blend in with here and then this just a square and these would look different. It's just, but the pattern is the same. It's just fabric difference. Or sometimes in some of these blocks as we go along, I added um, a few easy corner triangles, not on these, but ones that you'll see in the future because, you know, as the Riley Blake designer, we can see all of the blocks and what they look like and which is how I was able to design the bed runner and put the blocks in their placement. So, okay, right here is where I'm going to pause for a minute and have Cassidy show you a picture of the bed runner so you can kind of get an idea of what that will look like. Okay, so I know those those sections looks kind of funny that were blurred out, but because it's a mystery, each block, I didn't want to reveal blocks that were not yet revealed by Riley Blake. Okay, so here is my Honey Blossom block, and this is a 20-inch size. So if you follow me in this channel, you know that last year um, when I did my block, um, it was the Daisy Chain block, I believe, and is what it was called, and I showed you how to make that in 10 inch but I also gave the measurements and showed you a 20 inch block so it's double the size and so I did that the same for this year because I lot of, got a lot of requests to do that and maybe at the end we'll talk about you know putting this into a quilt this size block because this would be so amazing I think 12 of these blocks would make a perfect twin size quilt so I don't know maybe we'll talk about that and, and uh but I just want to let you know that this is sewn the exact same way and the exact same methods, just the cutting is different. Now I'm going to go ahead and give you the cutting in this video. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the description of this video. So you'll have to click on that for the cutting for the 20 inch block and for the cutting for the 10 inch block, even though that's a free download on um, the Riley Blake Designs website, as are all of them, which is where you will go to get the three PDFs every Tuesday. Um, but I did a little bit different fabric placement in my block as they did on <clears throat> in my block on the website. So that's what I'm talking about when you just place your fabric differently. So I'm gonna give you my cutting and then you can have their cutting when you download this block, just so that you can kind of see the difference and decide which, you know, which one you'd like to do. All right, so let me pull these pieces in. Oh, I want, I, I forgot to tell you that I did do this out of my new collection um, coming next month in March called Be Vintage. And I did show you Be Vintage in my, um, fall virtual market and so that's what these prints look like and so I just simply picked three prints from Be Vintage and then I picked this background which is a bee background that originally came from Prairie and then this is a bee background um, coral tiny circles that are in my bee backgrounds now so that's what that fabric is. All right, so let's get started with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on Miss Dolly, me and Miss Dolly. <clears throat> My vintage featherweight here is going to show you how to make the square and a square. So I've already done three of them just to save time because they're all done the exact same way. But what we're going to do is we're going to take, take this, take three of the background color and one of this inner ring color here. And we're just going to line these up very carefully on the corners. Maybe turn off the light on your machine. So All of the edges. Oh, thanks, sis. I usually do that. 
So a lot of people have said, doesn't your featherweight have a light? Yes, it does, but it glares strange when I'm um, filming. So, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sewing from corner to corner and I'm gonna start right here. And then I'm going to follow this corner along this line, okay? And that's, oh, I've got my stitch length turned up for some reason. Okay, and I'm just using a regular stitch length. And I'm just going to do that very carefully. Now, a lot of people um, have a hard time with squaring the squares. Everybody, everybody does because you're doing four easy corner triangles. But if you just cut accurately and sew accurately, you shouldn't have a problem. And so make sure that you line these up. And then when you're sewing from corner to corner, if you would like to, you can maybe sew just inside that corner this way a little bit so that when you fold your fabric back, it um, may be a little bit more accurate. You know, I'm talking just like a, maybe a needle width. And that's just, I don't really do that, but you, you can if you want to, if your square inner square is a little bit shorter and then you can trim it off. Okay, so I have to do two sides first, and anytime I'm doing a square and a square, when I have a different color um, corner than the rest, I always do it first, just so that, you know, I don't forget and use a background or something. So I press the seams, and then I come over here and just trim. Now, most of this block, I'm going to go ahead and press open, but for the these sections, I just press towards the triangle. And all I do with that is make sure this is open all the way using the tip of the iron to kind of slide back. And then, of course, I use the Riley Blake Quilters Clapper to get that flat. Now, I'm gonna let that, um, you know, cool down for just a minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew these two rectangles together while that's cooling. And that's just these two sections right here. And I can hear Reed crying down there. <laughs> I think we need to take just a little bit of a break and so we can make sure grandpa's okay with the baby and I'll be right back. Okay, we got baby Reed taken care of and he was a little bit hungry. So while I was waiting, I went ahead and Oh, you know what, I'm gonna set the seams first. And sew these rectangles together. And I'm gonna hurry and set the seams and I am definitely gonna press these open. And I like to use my roller for that. I just roll it, I still use an iron. As you can see, it's not quite flat, but it opens the seam all the way. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and finish those up. Let me start over here. This is kind of in the way, so I'm going to move that out of the way. Sometimes doing things on camera is a little bit awkward. And my last one here, and then I'll just run the iron over both of them at the same time. So we'll let those, we don't have to do anything else to that segment there, except for when we put the block together. And now this is what this looks like. And now we're going to add the other two opposite corners. Line that up. And then again, following this corner here. And I'm just using a scrap of fabric in between. And <clears throat> you know the drill, same thing I always say, to save on time and to save thread. This is really important to line these up correctly. Anytime you're doing easy corner triangles. But you know, especially when you're doing a square and a square. 
Okay. Then I'm just going to leave an approximate quarter inch seam allowance. I can use a rotary cutter, but I think, you know, scissors are just as easy and it doesn't have to be an exact quarter inch because it's already sewn. And then I'll come back over here, give it a quick press and then open these up again. And I usually tug on the corner just a little bit. I don't want to stretch it out, but I want to make sure that this is open all the way. I don't want to have a little pleat in there. I want the block to be accurate. And then since I've just used this one, this is warm on the bottom, so I'm going to turn it over and use the cool part there. Okay. And then I'm going to stack these back up there. And while we're waiting for that to cool, we've just got the pinwheel section left. I'm going to lay this out <clears throat> how it's going to go. Okay, so the pink's in the corners there. This design board's a little bit smaller. I mean, this is a 10-inch board, but because I've still got the seam allowances. Okay, so I want to make sure that I lay it out how it goes, because when I go to sew the block together, this is how I want it to look, and this stops me from making many mistakes if I'm using the design board. Okay, so that's how I have that laid out. And then I'm going to let that cool for just a minute, and then we'll put that one in the corner. But let's talk about how I make these pinwheels. So I'm having you cut two, two squares of background and two squares of the print. And we're going to get two half square triangles out of a set of these, okay, for a four to make these. Now, normally in the quilty math, you know, it works out if you cut these two and seven eighths because you want to square them up to two and a half inch at the end. But I like to cut them just a little bit bigger. So these are cut three inches, but you could even do three and a quarter um, just to make sure you have big enough because we are going to trim them down. And sometimes I have, you know, like to have a little bit more leeway. And so what I'm going to do with this is I'm not, because I want to get a half square triangle out of this half and this half, I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch on the side instead of going down the center, a quarter of an inch away from that, and a quarter of an inch away from that center. And how I'm going to do that is, this is my Seam So Easy guide, and see this line right here is your quarter inch seam allowance. This is your center line that I showed you how to use the easy corner triangles. And then this line is a quarter inch away from that, and this is when I use this line is when I'm doing this method. And so I start with the point lining up here, right here, because I know that I'm gonna, this lines up with the needle, so that means I'm gonna be automatically sewing a quarter of an inch away from, you know, this point to point line. So all I do instead of marking it is I am just following this line. So again, following the left line. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing, of course, right sides together. Line them up. You do have a little bit of leeway if you cut these a little bit bigger because we are going to trim them down. So it doesn't have to be so, you know, perfectly exact. And then I'll just go ahead, cut this one off. See, now I've got a line a quarter of an inch away and all I'm going to do is flip that over and do the other side. And that should be a half inch apart. Okay. All right, so I've got two sewn here. This is what it looks like. Maybe you can see the other side a little bit better. I'm going to bring these over here. Now this, I'll set back over here, slide this over here so I've got plenty of room to trim. So there's that. Okay, back over here real quick. I'm going to just set these seams. And again, you can use a rotary to cut these apart, but I find it's just as fast. Now you can see 
that this right here sticks over a little bit more. It's not going to matter. We're going to trim these up, and I'm going to show you how I do that. Let me grab my rotary cutter, and let's see. I have my little mat that I keep under here. I'm going to just set this up here so I have room to do this. I'll turn it over so you can see. Push that out of the way, and what these need to be before you sew them in is each one needs to measure two and a half inches. So here's my two and a half inch trim it ruler. Okay, I use my trim it rulers for squaring up and for laying out applique and for doing things like this. I don't cut pieces out, you know, like this to sew in the quilt. This is my trim it rulers. So what I do is, I'm going to see... I don't know, Cass, in the camera, can you see this seam if I have it or this, I, this way? Yeah, you can see it that way. Better. Okay, so I'm going to turn it to the background, okay? And what I'm going to do is line up this line right on my stitched line. And you can see that that corner is right on that stitched line. That corner is right on that stitched line. And you can see that I can trim off all the way around here. And so I use my little mat, but I don't really need a rotating mat for this because it's small enough that I just push on it and it rotates. And so I just simply trim that and then I can trim those off by rotating back around. Okay, and I just make sure that that's always on the line. I'm gonna bring that over here open it up. I am going to press these seams open. And again, because this is flat and not curved, this really helps to open those up. And then I'm going to put a clapper on there and then I'm going to continue trimming these up right here just in that same manner and I will trim them up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got these three all trimmed up with the two and a half inch ruler, but I realized that I didn't show you another way to do this. So I saved one. And so here's another way you can do it, which I don't normally do it this way because I think the other way is more accurate when it's already folded and you only have to trim two sides. But, you know, I do want to show you another way. Okay, so this is already open, and this might also help you to kind of see, you know, what I'm talking about, but so then you just lay it on there with this line matching up along the seam. Let me pull it this way. You know, I usually cut these three and a quarter instead of three. It just gives me a little bit more leeway. So, my advice to you maybe is to cut three and a quarter. And then you're just trimming. Oh, I did move it. But that's the beauty of these rulers. As long as that center line is on the diagonal and you've got some sticking out on all points, then that's all you need to do. So that's another way that you can trim them up. So I've got those four that need to measure two and a half inches. And let me set that there. And I also wanted to show you that I use my three and a half inch trim it for these because these segments is what that should measure. And so with that, you can just put these lines right here along the center of those diamonds and then see if there's anything that needs to be trimmed off. I can maybe trim this, yeah, this little side right here off just a little teeny bit. So that's how I use these trim it rulers, just to make sure that every little segment is perfect. Now, this one isn't square, and my trim it rulers are square, but I this one should measure right now three and a half by four and a half. But I could at least take my three and a half, see, and line it up. Let me put it sideways so you could see. And put it like that. And you can see that it measures at least, you know, three and a half inches tall. 
And then I could take my four and a half and put it to make sure that it's four and a half inches long to see if I needed to trim any off the edge. But, you know, I don't. It's good. Then I'll also use this four and a half when I form this pinwheel, which is what I'm going to do next. Let me turn that the right way. That's how I make mistakes when I put them back on my design board facing the wrong way. Okay, there we go. And so the pinwheel is going to measure four and a half inches unfinished because, you know, these are two and a half. And so all I'm going to do is lay these out like this. And you just make sure that this line is going the same way, this line is going in the same way, and then it's every other one dark and light. Pull this back over here. And I'm just going to stitch these together using the one quarter inch seam allowance line right here. Now, when I'm sewing something together like this that has seams in one corner, I like to flip it this way and start with the seams. I just think it lines up better and it's more accurate and I have more control. Grab my, my little red readers here. I guess it doesn't matter which color. They're all different strains, and they all help me. I usually just grab the one that's closest. And then I'll stitch along there. And then put these two right sides together. And put these with the seam allowances first. Now you could pin, I'm not a pinner, unless it's borders or long strips or something like that, then I do pin. But these small segments, I usually just kind of use my fingers in place of pins and, you know, kind of control that that way. Setting my seams, pressing open, and I roll a few times right there where the seams are joining up where they tend to be a little bit more bulky just to make sure that's opened and I'll just set the iron on there and a clapper on both seams now <clears throat> once that is cool and I can finish the pinwheel this is just you know I'm not going to finish sewing this block together because Obviously, it looks just like this. But what you're doing is just doing these segments like this so it forms a nine patch. And then you just simply sew it into rows. And then sew those three rows together. Now, when I get to that point, this should measure ten and a half inches. And then that's when I'll lay my ten and a half inch trim it ruler on there and square that up. Okay, and then you can tell by all the lines on the rulers and how they all match up with the segments, which is very nice. And then, let's see. Um, I wanted to talk about this block. So this block, I also use the trim it rulers. Let me just set that there so we can talk about that. I pulled these in because, let's see, I buried these other ones. <laughs> So you can use your half square triangles for this. It should measure four and a half inches. Whoops. You can use this trim it for the half square triangles is what I was trying to say. Okay. And then all four of those together are eight and a half inches. So I, I did this in the same method, only I cut these squares five and a half, which again, I'll have that in the cutting. But then how I showed you how to square up the smaller ones for the pinwheels using the two and a half, you're gonna use the four and a half to trim those up, okay? And then these corners right here would be six and a half. So you would use this six and a half inch trim it ruler for the square and a square right there. So that's how I use my trim it rulers for each segment along the way, just to make sure that when I get to that point, everything is trimmed up. And then, you know, rulers such as this, my other cute cuts, like my pink rectangles and my green squares, is what I use to cut out 
you know, my fabric pieces or any, for any quilt block or anything like that. This is just for cutting. And these are my cute cuts as well, but these are the trim it rulers that are the aqua. And these flowers right here are the non-stick and this blue. So everywhere there's the aqua, it's non-slip, not non-stick, non-slip. And I have this one fourth inch seam allowance window around the outside so that you can see what the finished block is going to look like within this window. And that's great for piece blocks and applique, both. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is during the break for a few minutes, I grabbed my little graph paper notebook that I have. You know, I use my, my sketch in here. And I hurried and drew very quickly a quilt setting. If you wanted to see that for this size block, if you wanted to make 12 20 inch honey blossoms blocks, and then you wanted to cut 31 sashings, three and a half by 20 and a half, they would finish at this. And then your cornerstones would be three and a half inch squares and you'd need to cut 20 of those. That's what your layout would look like, okay? And it would measure 72 by 95 without borders. So if you wanted to make a 95 inch square quilt, all you would do was add four more blocks here. Actually it would, yeah, and then it would measure exactly because it's 95 tall now. If you added four more blocks and put another row of sashings and cornerstones just like this, it would be 95 square, which would be a great queen size. If you wanted to make it king size, I would do that and then just add borders you know, to like 10 inch borders to add another 20 inches and, or, you know, five inch borders, whatever you wanted to do. That's the beauty of um, doing all the quilty math for this. And then you can make your borders as wide as you want, according to what kind of a drop you want on your bed. You know, if it's a bedspread or just a comforter or what you want or just a quilt. So that I use graph paper for everything. And this is my graph paper notebook that I use. And I just wanted to do that quick uh, sketch for you and kind of show you how I figure out a very simple setting for a quilt. So there's the 20 inch block. I'll also leave a link here for my last year's tutorial underneath this video so you can see the other 20 inch block um, that I did, which was my daisy chain last year. And you could obviously use the same quilt setting for that, for the daisy chain. So that is the filming today. And I will keep, since we're only on block seven and we have several more to go, I will keep posting each of my blocks on Instagram so that you can, you know, do the exact fabric placement if you want to use calico. One more thing I wanted to show you was, since I'm not finishing that other block, since I've got to this point, I just wanted to, again, show you the back of that block. So once I, once I sew these together, you know, into a pinwheel, then I will press that seam open just like this as well. And that's what they look like. So I hope you love this block as much as I do. I think it's really fun and it's always really fun to just do different fabric placement and this could have been a background. Uh, this could have been a background. And then this would have just been a ring. You could have done all of this background. And then these would have just been colors around here. I mean, you could do these the same color as this. So it just looks like the pinwheel sitting on top of a circle instead of a break of background. It's just, I, you know, I love to play with different placement of fabric, different values of fabric. And then, of course, the design board always comes in handy there because you can lay out the pieces when you've cut them before you sew them together and audition your pieces and your colors and your prints and see what you like and see what looks the happiest to you and what you want to do. So thanks for joining me today in my sewing room. And it's been fun chatting with you and showing you all the fun things. And I'll chat with you later.